Once they had finished eating, Madison saw that one of the staff was preparing Bo's food, and she volunteered to go outside to feed him. Elle decided to join her. In the garden, Madison squatted down before Bo's doghouse and spoke softly to him, asking him to come out. Elle ran after her. Madison, she called out. Madison turned around to see her standing in the wind, smiling at her. Her hair fluttered around her face, making her look especially endearing. What's the matter? she asked Elle. Madison didn't really like the woman. Since she had first met her, she had known she would be a danger to her. She would soon find out just how accurate her intuition had been. Nothing. I just wanted to help you. As she spoke, she came forward and squatted down beside Madison and the dog, who was now happily eating his dinner. She reached out to touch his head, and Bo growled at her. He wasn't a puppy, and he was quite big. Although he was very lively and playful, he was only like that with people he knew. While Elle had been coming around often lately, he still wasn't too comfortable with her, and he especially wasn't happy to be interrupted while eating. Bo, Madison reprimanded him. She then said to Elle, You shouldn't touch him while he's eating, he doesn't like it. Elle retracted her hand, but didn't move away from the dog. She looked straight at him and asked Madison, Why shouldn't he like being touched when he's eating? Her tone was strange, and Madison didn't know how to respond. She was fed up with Elle. I have nothing against you, Elle, she said, sensing that this may have been the issue. However, her words weren't completely truthful, as Madison had always felt a little hostile toward the Thompson girl. I think you're making it up, Elle told her, acting as if she hadn't heard what Madison had said. She reached out her hand again and began teasing Bo, provoking him as he tried to eat. She even moved closer to the bowl. I think you have a problem with me. Is it because of the scandal that Ian and I caused? Or is it because of my relationship with Ian? With just that one sentence, Madison's expression hardened. Do you think you can win against me? Elle continued, turning to look at her with a strange smile. Let's say something happened right now. How do you think the Westons would react? Who would they protect first? Who would Ian protect me or you? L. Madison suddenly shouted. This was partially because of her words and partially because at that very moment, L. had reached out and grabbed the food straight from Bo's mouth. No matter how docile Boo usually was, this action infuriated him. He let out a fierce growl and pounced on L. who called out in shock. The scream attracted Diana and Ian out of the house, and they stood in the doorway watching the scene before them. It took them a while to come to their senses. The usually gentle Bo had pushed Elle to the ground. He stood over her growling. He looked like he was about to bite her. Bo? Madison tried to calm him down, frightened by what had happened. She hadn't even had time to recover from what Elle had said to her when everything had suddenly gone awry. However, she was trying her best to control the dog. The people that took care of Bo also came running over. Bo quickly pulled away, but Elle was still lying on the ground, her face deathly pale. She was holding on to herself stiffly. She looked like a medical patient. Madison was stunned. Is she sick? She thought. When Diana had seen Bo threatening Elle, her heart had skipped a beat. She rushed forward as fast as she could and kept muttering, Ellie. Ellie, don't be afraid. Grandma is here. Grandma is here. Madison watched the scene in confusion. No one had ever told her that Elle was sick. She looked at Diana and Ian, who were quickly approaching the two of them. Behind them were the maids, looking nervous. Elle seemed to be on the verge of death. Ellie! Ellie! Diana knelt directly over her on the grass, her hands trembling. She didn't dare touch her. Ian knelt beside her and began checking her vitals. The seriousness of their attitude struck Madison deeply. Bo just scared her. Why did she react like this, she thought. Jean went inside to get Elle's medicine and call the Thompsons. Elle was breaking out in a cold sweat. Droplets were running down her face and soaking through her clothes. She had curled up into a tight ball, and she seemed to be having difficulty breathing. Ian and Diana tried to talk to her but she wasn't saying anything back. 
Ian tried his best to ease her breathing, but there seemed to be nothing he could do. Very soon, Jean returned with Elle's medicine and gave it to her. Kenneth, the Weston's chauffeur, was standing by. Waiting for an ambulance would be a waste of time. They would take Elle to the hospital by car. Ian, quickly carry her to the car, Diana commanded loudly. Madison stood to the side watching. It was only at this moment that she managed to regain her senses. Her eyes were cold as she looked at the woman lying on the ground, struggling in pain. A chill ran down her spine. She didn't even hesitate to put her life at risk just to prove a point. That's terrifying, she thought. Ian glanced at Madison and then picked Elle up and took her to the car. At first, Madison wanted to follow him, but Diana took a step forward and blocked her. Her expression was chilling, and she raised her palm high. Slap. She planted a slap on Madison's cheek. Serves you right, Diana barked at her when she saw Madison's shocked face. If anything happens to Elle, I'll make sure you pay. Ian was too busy focusing on Elle to notice what had happened. The woman in his arms seemed to be getting better after having taken her medicine. Once she was placed in the back seat, he made to step out of the car, but Elle grabbed onto his sleeve. Diana, who had caught up with him, said, Don't talk now, Elle. Just rest. We're taking you to the hospital. Grandma won't let anything happen to you. She seemed just like a caring grandmother. Elle shook her head with great effort. She hadn't said a word the entire time, but now she finally opened her mouth to speak. The first sentence she managed to say was, It wasn't Madison's fault. It was me. I... Diana cut her off livid. Enough. Say no more. I already know what had happened. Madison's background isn't that great, and she's petty in her ways, she thought. Just rest. Ian and I will stay by your side. Ian's frown deepened. Elle pursed her lips and glanced at Ian. Her eyes flashed with a hurt look, and she said, Diana, please let Ian go and see Madison. She was scared, too. Her voice was soft and her speech uneven. She seemed like she could stop breathing at any moment. Diana's heart ached so much that she reached out her hand and said, Shh, hush now. Ian is a doctor. He'll go to the hospital with us. Don't worry about Madison. I'll make sure she gets what she deserves. Kenneth was still waiting for an order, and Diana finally told him to get going. Reluctantly, Ian sat beside Elle, who was still holding on to his sleeve. He hoped that Madison would be fine when he got back. Some of the maids had heard what Elle had said about Madison in the car, and the word of her pleading for Madison spread quickly among the staff and the rest of the Weston family. Madison sat in the living room quietly. The staff shook their heads when they saw her. They couldn't believe what a horrible, scheming person she was, especially since she looked so pure and kind. The atmosphere in the room was heavy, and Madison found it hard to breathe. Ian wasn't by her side. Instead, he had gone to the hospital with Elle. Madison thought back to what Elle had told her in the garden and lowered her eyes. The staff whispered behind her back. She looks so innocent, but I bet it's all an act. Bo is usually so obedient. She must have given him the order to attack. Mrs. Weston definitely seems to think so. Bo loves Madison, right? I'm sure he would listen to her. Madison pursed her lips and didn't say anything. In the end, she got up and took a cab to Mercy Hospital. Even if she had a bad reputation, she would still try to explain what had happened. <laughs>